So this afternoon I'm in a lab in chemical engineering and I'm interviewing Dr. David Latulip and his student Jeff. David is a professor here in chemical engineering and his research area is water treatment. Jeff was a student for his last summer and looked at some wastewater treatment research as part of his statistics project for my course. David, the research that Jeff did for you was related to water treatment. What was the motivation behind this? Um, it, it was a collaboration that we did with an industrial partner um, and they challenged us to come up with a new technique that would benefit them in terms of their uh, system optimization. Okay. One of the challenges that they face is to be able to select from the large number of polymers that are available to them the best one in terms of both performance and economics. Okay. And uh, so we developed a, a new technique, something that hadn't been developed before, that enabled them to do a high throughput test. Um, but because this was a very uh, new area of research, right away we identified that there were certain factors, variables in our experiment that might affect the flocculation performance. And so we sought to identify which one of those were the most important. Okay. So, Jeff, you're going to take a minute and demo the equipment for us, showing us the factors that you varied and the outcome that you measured from your experiments. Yep. Cool. So, Jeff, in your experiments you varied six factors. Mm -hmm. The first was the time duration, a low time and a high time. Yep. And then tell us about the others that you varied. Yep. So, uh, the other factors that I varied, the first one was the actual uh, speed of mixing. Okay. So, we started at a power level of 28 and then as a low factor and a power level of 35 as a high factor. Uh, that's on our mixing, uh, our mixer. Uh, we also um, did on the actual mixing bar itself. Uh, so we used a bar type stir as well as a cross type stir. Uh, and then addition to our, in addition to our system um, uh, factors that we did, uh, we looked at some of the actual polymer factors. So the first one of those was uh, the dose of the polymer, or how much polymer we added, so a low and a high value. Uh, you can also see visually a difference, so I'm going to demonstrate that to you guys now. So the first one is a low level dose. As you can see, not a lot's happening in the low level dose. This is the high level dose. And what you should start to see after about a minute of flocculation, there'll be a visual difference in the digestate uh, in terms of the clear water appearing. Uh, we also varied the uh, molecular weight, both low and high, as well as the charge density of the polymers, the low and the high as well. For low molecular weight and low uh, charge density, uh, we also have a high molecular weight with a low charge density. We have a low molecular weight with a high charge density, and we have a high molecular weight and a high charge density. Okay, so all combinations there. So that's six factors, two levels for each factor. Yes. Your outcome variable mm -hmm. uh, was the CST. Yeah. Can you talk a bit about what that means? Yeah. The capillary suction time essentially is uh, how easy it is to remove water from the digester itself. So we're going to take a look at the randomization on your sheets of paper in a, in a second. Mm -hmm. Why did you do randomization? What's the need for randomization in the experiments? Uh, we randomized uh, in order to reduce the amount of disturbance variables that we had. Uh, so the first one that we had, we found that there would be a disturbance by using different uh, sludge sources uh, or digestate sources. Uh, so in order to eliminate that, uh, we used all of the same digestate from one single source. Uh, and as well, um, in order to eliminate the day effect, uh, we did all of our or I did all of my experiments all in one day. So Jeff, uh, we're going to take a look at all the paperwork that you went through to plan this experiment, which is very typical actually. I find I do a lot of planning on paper first before I do any single experiment. Yeah. Why, I see here that you ended up with 16 experiments rather than 64, which would have been required by a full factorial and six factors. Can you explain why 16? Uh, part of why we did 16 was just sort of the general feel of the project. Uh, the whole point of this technique was to be a high throughput technique. So we wanted to reduce the number of experiments we had to do. And as well, since this technique was just new and being thought of uh, as we went, uh, we wanted to do sort of a screening test. So we didn't want to have to perform 64 experiments 
Uh, and we also didn't mind that we had some confounding uh, at the end of our experiments. Okay. Let's take a look at some of that. Sure. So let's take the rest of your papers here. Um, can you just walk, walk us through a bit about what was going on in your mind as you were planning this work? Yeah, so the first thing I wanted to do uh, was look at our, uh, our, our generating terms. Uh, so we looked those up, in, or I looked those up in the table. Uh, and from there, I was able to establish what the defining relationship was for the cause of course. Uh, and then after that, uh, I was able to determine the confounding variables, uh, which I listed out here. And um, since we were looking mostly at the primary factors, we didn't mind that if there was confounding of some of the two-factor interactions, uh, that wasn't as much of a concern for us. Right. So yeah, it was a resolution for design. So yes. two-factor interactions that are being confounded with other two factors. Yes. Right. Great. Mm -hmm.